Hello and welcome back to the Toronto Westside Developer.com. I am Peter Jaworski, the Toronto Westside Developer, formerly specializing in Drupal, now looking at Android app development, though not exclusively. Um, and in this fourth video tutorial, I want to show you how we can create an input listener to our app so that we can actually get the answer from the user that gets an equation and answers it. Before we do that, you'll notice I'm over at torontowestsitedeveloper.com slash store. Here you can purchase my video tutorial series as I complete them and get them posted. Each is only $20 and each sale goes to help me to continue to develop these tutorials, keep them free and keep them frequent. So I greatly appreciate all the support thus far. Alternatively, if you can't afford the $20 but do want to help out, please just leave a comment or a thumbs up on YouTube. Both are greatly appreciated as well. Um, and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. Uh, I do track those subscription numbers and it's great to see so many people being helped. Now, with all of that out of the way, why don't we jump back over to our code? So previously what we were looking at was actually grabbing our views and dynamically setting the text to them. But what we haven't done is allowed the user any way of actually providing an answer. And so why don't we go ahead and we do that? Um, if you're familiar with Java, you'll know that Java's got um, input listeners. Um, and so that's what we're actually gonna use. It's a specific input listener um, that is provided by Android. And so in order for us to do that, we actually set it on this answer view edit text. It has a method which we're gonna actually use. And so it is called set on editor action listener. Now this method itself takes another object. And so if you take a look at the developer um, documentation from Android, you'll see that there's a method public void set on editor action listener, just for your reference, I'm over at develop reference text view. And it actually takes an object here. Um, and so this is a text view on edit action listener. And when you take a look at this, this is actually um, an interface. And so it's gonna be an anonymous class that we're gonna provide in. And the way that we do that here is by, on the edit actioner listener, we're gonna provide a new, oops, new text view on editor action listener. And so this guy goes down there and there we go. And so you'll see that this is kind of a static method here. And so it's on edit action listener. Yep, we're good there. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna call this Boolean on editor action. And we know we have to call this because of the documentation. And this is the actual signature that the actual, that the documentation provides, the key event. And I'm gonna explain it all in one sec. I just wanna get this all typed out for us event and there we go we're good there and then probably no 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 okay so we know that this is the actual signature because this is the method that has to be provided on edit action on editor action and so what this actually does is it takes in the view uh, so the view that was clicked on and then it takes in an action id uh, so this is the identifier of the action i'm going to show you where we get this and then this is the event um, and so the event that actually triggered it, otherwise you're gonna be null. And so don't worry about that just yet. But here, the view we know is gonna be the editor view. This action ID, what this actually is, is, oops, I'm gonna close our manifest. Here, in the IME options, we actually set this to be edit text action done. And so that's what this is going to refer to. And that's why it was important that we did that before. Because in this, now what we need to do is we need to check to see if the action ID is equal to, and you actually pass in editor info, and we're gonna say IME action done. And that's how we check to see if the action that we're receiving matches the action that we defined in the edit text. Otherwise, you know, if we have multiple edit, um, edit views, we could be looking at different ones that wanna do different things. And so that's why it's important to do this. Now, what we need to do is a few different things. So first, we're gonna grab the input that we receive, and so we'll just call that string input is equal to, and we're gonna get that from the, the view itself. And so we're gonna call get text on that view, and then we're gonna pass that as a string. And then what we're gonna do is check to see if it's empty. Um, and if it is empty, what we wanna say is that this was a zero entry. Otherwise, we're gonna get an error. And then if not, we're just gonna go ahead, get the text, and we're gonna get that as a string. And then now we've got our input. What we're gonna do is actually pass it into a new method, which is called the reInit. Um, and we're gonna tell it to reinitialize based on whether or not we have the right answer or the wrong answer. And so the way that we do that, and I'll explain this all in a second, 
is by creating another method, which is called check answer. Um, and so we're going to call, we're going to check our answer, see if it's the right answer or wrong answer. Dependent upon that, we're going to pass that answer, right or wrong, into the reinitialize to determine what we're going to do. Identify the, the user that got the right answer, or identify that got the wrong answer. And so these two methods have to be created. So we're going to go ahead and do that. But before we do, we also have to identify whether or not we've handled this um, this action itself. And so we're going to identify that this has not been handled unless we've actually matched our action ID to the action ID that came in. And then so here, what we're going to say is handled is equal to true. And then at the end of all of this, we're going to return handled. And that tells Android whether or not we've taken care of this or haven't taken care of this. And so why don't we go ahead and create these two different methods. So check answer is going to be the easiest one to create. So let's go ahead and create that one first. We'll do it down here as protected. Boy, actually, it's going to pass in a Boolean uh, check answer. And this is going to take in, uh, I think it's, we're going to pass in an integer. And so int user answer. And really, it's just a one liner. We're going to return if the user answer is equal to the answer itself. Uh, and that's all we need to do. But now, for reinit, what we have to do is actually reinitialize our setup. And so we're going to protected void reinit. And we're just going to say, rather than this, we will pass in a Boolean right answer, right? So whether they got it right or wrong. And so here, what we'll do is if it's, if it's the right answer, if it's the wrong answer, and then initialize our views again, right? And so this is pretty simple. We know that if we're going to reinitialize our views again, we're just going to go ahead and call init. Um, but before we do that, one thing that we should do is actually create our answer view text to be null. We want it to be empty again, right? We don't want there to be an answer. We don't want it to hang around. So we're going to set that to null, and then we're going to reinitialize the new equation. And so that's pretty straightforward, pretty easy to do. Now, if it's the right answer, we know that all that we got to do is if it's right answer, because that's going to be true or false, uh, we're going to do something else. We're going to do something else. And so what is it we're going to do if we get the right answer? If we get the right answer, we want to have a high score, a current score. And so what we'll need to do is do current score plus plus, right? Um, and if not, current score is going to be equal to zero. Now, obviously, we don't have these variables. So let's go ahead, copy these and create them up here. So private oops, int current score. And let's go ahead and create a private int high score while we're at it, because we're going to need that as well. And so when we're initializing everything down here, let's go ahead and do current score is equal to zero. And unfortunately, we don't have a way of persisting our high score. So it's going to be initialized to zero as well. Every time you set the app, you're going to have a new high score of zero. Um, and so down here, we know that current score is going to be plus plus. Current score is going to be equal to zero. We should actually check and update the high score here as well. And so we can do that by incrementing the high score, the current score. And if that happens to be greater than the high score, then we know that the high score is going to be equal to the current score. And that should be it. Now let's see if we can actually figure out why this is giving us an error. Let's go ahead and start that, see if it fixes it when we rebuild. No, we have a we have an issue there. So I'm just going to copy a line here. Maybe I have this actually wrong text. Yeah, so I must have typed something wrong. Oops. Either way, I typed something wrong. So here what we've done is just new text view on editor action listener, uh, and then the same stuff that we had before. And so now I'm hoping this actually gives us a problem because I want to show you how to actually rectify this. And so I'm going to start this on my Nexus 5. And with the beauty of editing, you didn't actually have to watch the emulator coming up. I cut all that out for you. But here you'll see I'm trying to edit an answer. And really, when I click on it, then my dialog shows up. My, my 
my input. I want my input to show up right away. Um, and so there's an easy way that we can do that. We're going to actually look at our Android manifest file here, and we're going to actually add one line. So I'm just going to paste this line here, and it's going to come in our activity uh, because this is only going to apply to this specific activity. And so what we're saying is um, the Windows Soft input mode should be visible. And so when I rerun my app here, I go ahead and click start. Hit OK. Go back to our emulator here. You'll see immediately that this pops up, whereas it didn't do that before. And now when we go ahead and do that, and oh, what's 12 times 9? Man, let me test my math skills here. 108. We hit OK. That was obviously the wrong answer. Hit 4. Wasn't the wrong answer because what we've done here is we've hard coded these zeros. Forgot to update that, so we're going to go back to our code. And down here, instead of current score being that, we're going to go plus current score. That's why it's always good to put in at to do comments so that you always remember when you're going to come back and refactor something. I score. Go ahead and save that. Actually, I don't need to save it. Just rerun it. It'll save it. So now when we rerun this guy, we're going to hit OK. 3 times 10, 30. Got the current score. We're good. 24. Good. We can see it incrementing. Go to 0. Current score is going to be 0. Hit 12. We're good. 120. We're good. Ooh. 12 times 9 is 108, right? We had that one before. And we see that's the right answer again. High score has gone up, current score has gone up, so we're good. That's it for this video tutorial. Again, all that we did, set an action listener, so we were able to grab that, reinitialized our equation, checked our answer, and in the uh, Android manifest, added uh, a one-liner to ensure that this uh, input box always came up right away as soon as our app was started. In the next video tutorials, what we'll do is actually provide some type of notification on whether or not you got the right answer, be it a toast message or an image view. We'll also look at persisting these values, and then we'll probably check out some intents and do some other cool stuff. So hopefully this tutorial helped you. If it did, please leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, let me know. Greatly appreciate the feedback. Hopefully we'll see you back for tutorial five. Thanks very much for watching.